There's 80% alcoholism. Are you happy to talk with this camera? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. That's good, that's good. I just want to make sure. So, 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 like, we'll grow out of it. It's possible, yeah. If, it's if you go into that area that I was born in, born in and read, and it's, it's a prosperous area. Yeah, no, I, I agree. No that. longer go to prison. <laughs> oh, so, well, jobs. Uh, Definitely agree that over time, uh, demographics change. But I think that the Islamic way of life has a way of, of particularly countering that. I think that they can form tight communities, they can use their own language, they can meet at their own masjids, their own mosques, they can have their own inner communities that extend not just to social life but also into economics. They can have their own businesses. We actually have a Christian equivalent of this called the Benedict op Option, yeah. which we're not currently enacting at the moment. What we have at the moment is, let's take the UK, there are many Christians in the UK, but we're very, de we're very uh, decentralised. There are some Christians in London all over the place. And we yeah. meet in churches and we have fellowship that way, but we don't live in Christian communities. We effectively have a secular community that meets at church on Sundays and kind of, you know what I mean? If I go back to the Acts of the Apostles, mm. I see a Christian community as communist. Communist. Okay, okay, okay. Communist okay. rather than communist. Sure. And when you talk about uh, Islamic communities having their own language and their own meeting places, you have here in London, you have London slang. Yeah, 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 which, Cockney, Which right? I yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah. understand, Cockney uh, slang. Uh, when was the last time you heard someone speak Cockney? I'm not going to lie, it's been, I, I do hear it. Actually, I think mostly Kay, I think, speaks kind of Cockney-like, but, you know. I, I haven't heard it in a long time. Yeah, but it's because the community is just, it's yeah, but you could go diluted. To, you yeah. could go to Donegal in Ireland, mm. and they speak English, but you wouldn't understand a word they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they have sense. their own communities. Mm. They, 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 there are areas in, in, in Ireland that have the Gaelic language. Yeah. And, and yeah. they gather together with Gaelic languages. So, yeah. so what's so different with the Islamic community? Can they not grow the same as we? And because I think the Islamic community has a defense against the secular world. And I think that largely is usually a unique language, a common place of worship that distinguishes itself against the West. So you need to think, in churches, we don't go around saying the West is evil. It, it, well, to use Islamic language, the West is, um, what, what's the word they use? Uh, what's, um, I forgot the word now. Yeah, yeah okay. immoral, immoral, yeah? yeah. They say it's vastly immoral. They say, look around, look at these women who are having sex. Look at these women who are drinking. Yeah. Look at the men who are getting drunk. Yeah. And, and you can see this. Uh, so you go to Stratford, you go there in the city center and you look at there on a Saturday night, you will see drunk people all around the place. Yeah. And you will also see a strong Muslim community. And you see them dressed uh, in uh, niqab, you see them dressed in hijab or whatever it might be. And they are looking around and they are seeing all these secular people doing all these things. And it just verifies in their head, uh, decadence, that's the word, that these people are decadent. And, and even in the East, they will teach the same thing, that the West is decadent because they have all these different things. But in the church, we don't have that concept. You, you will very rarely hear a sermon by a, 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 pre, a, a vicar or a preacher, or whatever it might be, a pastor saying, the West is decadent, don't engage in it. Rather we say, the West has issues, here's how we address the issues, because we partake in the West. They don't partake in the West in their view. There are many Muslims, if you ask them where their loyalty is, they, they'll definitely say Islam first, and their nationality second. And they'll often say that their nationality might not even be this, the UK, they might say it's actually Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, they say Indonesia, they say any of these places. But if you take history, yeah. European history, let's take yeah. Irish history, just oh, Irish yeah. history. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at Irish history. Yeah. Uh, up until 1890, 80% were Catholic. Oh, okay, yeah. Why? Yeah. Because of the strong communities they had as part of the church, I would imagine. No. Are you going to say something else? Sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> It was because the oppressors were Protestant. Oh, sorry, sorry. And it was the know, only okay. way yeah, yeah, yeah. that they could distinguish who they were because they took the property, ah, they, they took the language, right. they took the cultures. So, so the they took their identity <coughs> from, yeah. So from the, the, yeah. the only okay, way so we mean, could yeah. actually say we are Irish mm. and oppose the oppressor was to be Catholic. Okay. And, and yeah, yeah. maybe your Muslims are in the same similar situation. I'm only been the devil's advocate here. Sure, sure. Because if I look at history, mm. not just Ireland, mm. but other parts of Europe where you had a similar demographic, yeah. a similar problem. Mm. Now, what brought Irish Catholicism to where it is today, which is almost non-existent, there may be 20% of the population following it. Why? What brought it there? So I do think that there is a, possibly, I think there are other problems as well. I think there is a strong um, 
emphasis on, on worship, on liturgy, on the spiritual life for Catholics, but there isn't much of a, I would argue, an intellectual commitment. So I think that in many ways, there are Catholics who are not intellectually aware of why they hold their faith, which is perhaps not as much of a problem in Protestant circles. That's my opinion. I, I would, That's my opinion. I would, I would so, agree with you. I would agree with you that there's only a limited number of okay. Catholics who would be au fait with all the aspects of their religion and who actually practice it to the extreme, and I'm using that word respectfully, and who read the Bible, but how many Muslims read the Quran? Oh, absolutely. How many Muslims can speak? Right. Uh, I, but I, I want to uh, come back at you though. With for them, it's a culture, not just a religion. Their religion and culture are intertwined. I, I so, that. so they will focus on the cultural, not the religious. So, for um, but it was yeah. the same in Ireland in 1890. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> it's the same in Ireland in 1890. So, are you aware in France at the moment there are problems in France where every week a church is burned down in France, I statistically average? I realised that there were problems because approximately 25 percent of the population are Muslim, that they're mainly ex-Algerian, Moroccan, yeah. and that they have not integrated. Yes. But we have to look at the Algerian war as okay, the that's cause of that. Fine. It isn't just in France, though. We have issues here as well. Um, I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as France, but it still happens in this place. I would say also that the Protestants and the Catholics, although there was violence and there was an active form of oppression, as you go back to Oliver Cromwell when he came in, did horrendous things, attacking and killing people in forts and things. You, you, there's a history in Ireland of, of actual oppression from the English, yeah? With the Muslims coming to this country, they don't have that kind of understanding of oppression. Like an, they, they had in India, you, you, could say, you could say in some areas potential. And in Iraq, and in sure. Israel, and in Lebanon. Okay, in well, Sudan. Okay, so what, what, what I mean is, if you look at places like Saudi Arabia, yeah. there's no reason to think if you grew up in Mecca, or Jeddah, or wherever you are, there's no reason to think you've been directly oppressed by anyone in the West. The English are generally not the oppressed. The English, sure. They're not the oppressed. They're not the oppressed. You know, they, yeah, generally, yeah, generally. Well, it depends. Oh, you're talking about English, yeah. Okay. They tend to be viewed as an oppressing. And, uh, yes, historically, yes. If, yes. You, have oh, a, if you have a look at the history of the Hijaz, yeah. which is the area in the area around Mecca, in Western, in Mecca and yeah. etc. Medina. You, you, you will find that Lawrence of Arabia was involved there. <laughs> that there were numerous promises made to the uh, sheriff there as regards the United Arab uh, State and they were let down by both the English and the French. So what, what do you call oppression? Is oppression just keeping people down? So in this, in this sense I'm talking about actual war. So I'm talking about the English going into Irish lands and actually killing people there. The English went into Egypt, they went into sure. Sudan, sure. they went into Iraq, yeah. they went into Israel. You're aware with Ireland, it, it, it was, well, by modern standards it would be a war crime, like what Oliver Cromwell did. This nation right. has yeah. a particular predilection for property ownership. How do you mean by that? The ownership of property is generally placed above the sanctity of humanity. Here. We take the, the rights of property very seriously, and that actually largely comes from the Scottish tradition of Adam Smith. In, in the Wealth of Nations, he talked about the importance of free trade, and part of that is the idea that you own property. And you've got uh, John Locke as well, he would talk about the philosophy of that. So I agree, but, yeah, and you could say however, it's perverted. However, okay. property ownership was certainly institutionalised pre-Smith. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah but the idea that someone would own property, I absolutely agree with that. But the significance of the rights of the king being able to... Uh, uh, go, uh, Go into take, your property. Take a we'll, yeah, and, a, yeah. and, a, and a vassal. So, for example, a, a king could have gone into your house back then. He would have had the right to have done that. Oh, so, like, like, like the police can come into your house now. Not, not without, without a warrant. A warrant. No. Yeah. Or suspicion of, uh, like a, a oh, if, you, you know well what I mean? They can like, because they can arrest you at your property, which constitutes a search. If, yeah, if they have suspicion you've done a crime or you're an active reasonable cause, reasonable well, cause you know, like, yeah. They, they can't, just, you can't just walk into your house and say. Stop, yeah. stop and search. What one person's reasonableness is another person's victimness. Absolutely fine. I agree that there are edge cases, and I think that has been abused in many cases. I, I'm absolutely fine. But I, just going back to our point, I, I see that there are reasons to be happy and to say, hey, I think maybe Islam is on the decline. I think there are good reasons for leaving that. But I think that there is still a very important battle here. Excuse me, sorry, Islam is on decline. Yes. yes. Uh, well, well, no, well, let me let me describe. Let me describe. It will in future. It will in future. It's largely to do with uh, wealth of certain nations. As you become more wealthy, like the Middle East becomes more wealthy, demographically, you have less kids. 
So at the moment, like, you can look like even 20 years ago, it, like the amount of children that Muslim families were having has dropped radically, like it has, like it has here. 12,000 for West, for yeah. the West, it's only so, 12,000. Um, I would suggest you look at a YouTube channel called Sneakers Corner. He's, he's done a video about this that talks about Sneakers, Sneakers Corner, yeah. So well, there are two yeah. billion Muslims, give or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm saying in the future, in decades from now, Islam will decline. And doesn't it also state in, in the that, that's hadith a, as well? Didn't Muhammad say uh, it, it would decline? decline? He did. It's a prophecy complete, right? Yeah, yeah. Christianity. I like to believe it will be on the incline. But that's my... Opinion. opinion. But is it your opinion also that Islam will decline? It's, no. Well, it, it's based on evidence that Muslim um, birth rates in in traditionally poorer countries, but now they're getting wealthier, will, will go down. Yeah. It, it's backed up by evidence, is what I'm saying, based on birth rates that you can observe through government statistics. That there's a trend that is going down, and I'm saying that that trend is probably going to continue. But your belief in Christian ascendancy is my opinion. Is, is your opinion? So that's not based on evidence. No, that's based on the fact that I think that as Christians we can do a better job preaching to the lost. Yeah, in, that's my opinion. In preaching to the to, to the lost. So whether that's ex-Muslims. Oh, talking about me. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I'm the lost. Yeah. You are the lost. Yeah. Well, I've 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 lost my uh, Christian faith. And I believe hopefully one day that he will reaffirm his faith in Christ. That's my hope. And that's my hope. Have you no religion now? I believe in God. I believe in God. But this is, this is more of an intellectual question here. Um, I do think, you, uh, you may have alluded to it, but in this country, Islam I think is growing, in effect, in this country. Yeah. But I think that that will reach a peak and then eventually, hopefully, decline. Worldwide, it's growing. Yes, and, yes. And world population is no, growing. No, no, it's not. It's not growing in sub-Saharan Africa. It's not growing in Indonesia. It's definitely not growing in Iran. It's, it's, not, it's not growing, growing in Iran. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's not growing in Iran. No, in Iran, in there's, 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 there's mass apostasy in Iran. Yeah. Like they're, they're doing polls and they but, keep but that's because that, of yeah. the government rather than the religion. Well, it's probably to do with their history. But one you, you the remember, other. Yeah, you remember that, uh, was it, in the 19, 1970s, Iran had a revolution? Yeah, that's uh, right, yes. The Ayatollah so, Khomeini. Yeah, so well. Iran, there are pictures of girls in Iran in the 70s wearing miniskirts. They don't wear miniskirts in Iran at the moment. Well, I don't know. But my point is, is that there was a massive urge of no re, re islamicize So you could drink yeah. in the 70s yeah, in right. Iran? That's you could yeah, go yeah, out yeah, yeah. and yeah, have that's a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You couldn't uh, after that, though. The Ayatollah. Yeah, the Ayatollah, Ayatollah, yeah. And so, from the institutionalisation of the Islamic Republic yeah. in 1979, yeah. you now have uh, a massive apostasy. apostasy. Yeah, there, there are, I mean, there, there are stories of Muslims who go to the masjid and they, they perform a cat, they pray, but they're atheists. But they do it because culturally they're expected to do it. And we know this because we give independent polls. And it's something like only 20%? Uh, 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 yeah, pure research. Yeah, what's I love pure research. Crime, yeah. What's the punishment for her? Because apostasy is a crime. Death. In, yeah, death. According to all um, schools of Islam, it's death. It's just a question of how do you do it? Do you wait so long before before you kill them? Or do you do it immediately? Do you give them a second chance? Yeah, you know. So the, 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 the apostate, as it were, or, or the act of apostasy yeah. is something that is self-declared or imposed? Like, can you can you? I think you can. In, uh, can you declare someone an apostate so if they're let, found guilty? Let's be careful because there's yes. an Islamic perspective and there's a cultural one. Yeah. So, for example, in Afghanistan, there are stories of women who are burned alive because the, an imam just said that they lied about the the, the Quran. Like it, that isn't necessarily Islamically prescribed. You can maybe make a case that that's not appropriate in Islam. But culturally, they do it because that's how they that's how they are. That they're mostly villages with tribes. Like they don't have they have these net, net, net communities where they feel they need to moderate them, and that's how they moderate them. You know, moderation is in control. Yeah, as in someone is blasphemed, we need to kill them. Now that might not necessarily be the way they do it. As in they they tell them you have blasphemed and then kill them. Might not be Islamic. I don't know actually. But saying you are like you are no longer a Muslim publicly, that definitely is Islamically. So, so you see what I mean? There's a difference there between what Islam teaches and what the culture itself has as a practice. The culture being the, the application of yeah. Sharia law. Yeah. 
because they all... But you have to have Sharia law to, to have that culture. Is it grounded in... The culture law? uses Sharia. The culture is inherently intertwined with Sharia. If you talk to anyone in Afghanistan about whether they follow the Sharia, they'd like to believe they would. It's yeah. a necessary precondition of... Of where they are culturally, yes. If you took away Sharia from Afghanistan, they couldn't, they couldn't explain a lot of their policies. Like, how would they explain blasphemy laws? Can you I, guess they, I guess they would just say... The same way, I don't know, we did in the past. I guess they say. Well, surely some of this has to be control of culture. In, in, in the worship of the fire gods, Mazda, and things like that in Iraq. Yeah, well, you can see that. Some, some of it has to be based in that. Yeah. That they believe in Mazda, the fire god. They believe that there was that God has two faces, one good, one evil, and they. And this goes back to Persian. Zoroastrianism. Yeah, Zoroastrianism. This goes back to Persian. Uh, very popular in Persia. Yeah. Like like and, many. And there's still some of them practicing in Bombay. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And a few in Iran. Think they're going back to it in Iran. <laughs> but most cultures absorb into their religions. Yes. What's yeah, that's actually true. I would argue that Christianity as a religion can be multicultural. In other words. Well, I think it's self-evident, right? Like, you can see people with different skin colours, different backgrounds, and they are all Christian, and they all have that. Yeah. What about it? Well, the Inquisition, for example. Did you expect it? Was, it was, was a form of, of, yeah. of what? So, uh, it's in Monty Python. No one expects a Spanish Inquisition? No, 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 no one expects so. a Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, you're not, you're not heard of that? Do you know what? That, you're not seen Oh, okay. Uh, well, you're missing uh, the classic. That, that anyway. Python is, is something which is, has, has, has honestly passed my brain But um, the, the, the Inquisition, for example, yeah. was a, um, a search for heretics. Yes. Uh, 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 a witch hunt. Uh, In which sense? Uh, 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 which sense are you talking so about? So I wouldn't say it's a witch hunt. And there's a reason why I wouldn't say yeah. it's a witch hunt. But, but the, why? Why do you think that happened? Like, what, what, what's the background of it? Well, no, no, that the Inquisition didn't actually end up killing as many as some people reported did. That's right. That's right. It's, it's actually in the thousands, not in the millions, which you will hear people claim. Well, in, the in the modern area, the McCarthyism within, within the United America, States. Yeah. So, but, but whatever but it there, is... Well, you could even say that some parts of McCarthyism were justified, potentially, because they were actually the communist spies, right? You, know, yeah. you, you, can, you can critique the idea, but well, well, you can say there was actually Iraq a threat. Well, after 2001, yeah. then, um, that, you know, there's an extension of, of logic which justifies a casus belli, whether rightly or wrongly. Anyway, the, 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 the point that I'm trying to make is that through history, wherever you would look like to search, there are systems, authoritarian regime systems, in which heresy or apostasy or whatever it is, is, is not tolerated yeah. by the authoritarian oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not challenging that view. I'm just adding context to the view. It than what you're saying, right? it's a far deeper cause, because when the Spaniards took over Granada, the last Muslim uh, state in Spain, they inherited a lot of Jews. And what they did was they gave the Jews a choice. They gave them either convert to Catholicism or else leave the country. A lot of them actually went to uh, Turkey. A lot of them converted. And it was those converts that the state were afraid of. They believed that they weren't actually true converts. And a lot of those converts actually went to South and Central America with the conquerors. Well, it's like saying, you know, if everyone votes Conservative, you know, then there's no problem. The government it's, will win. It's, 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 again, I have to look at it from an Irish perspective here. I have to look at it from an Irish. We had a famine in 19, and sorry, in 1850. And what happened was, food was been exported, but certain foods were been imported. Now, people had to convert to get the food. In Ireland, we call them supers. S O U P E R S. People who took the soup. Yeah. They took the soup. In other words, they they got food to stay alive and they became Church of Ireland because of it. No, the Church of Ireland people didn't trust them. After that, they just didn't trust them. And that's exactly the way it was with the Jews. But you need to you need to eat. That was the same with the Jews in, in Spain. They had to eat as well. They had to exist as well. But the state didn't trust them. Well, you're, but then you're talking about hierarchy. Aren't you? You're talking about a, a Guys, I'm, system. Uh, I'm with probably going to have to head up and out. Well, thank but, you very um, much. It was great having a chat with you. Great catching up with you. See you in a year's time. <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you when I see you, my friends. God bless. Yeah. Take care as well. Chris, we wrap up. Good one. Chris. Cool. Having a chat. Uh, 
with a gentleman about the history of Christianity over the world. We talked about Ireland and how Christianity manifests there. We talked about how the English came into Ireland and did many things there as well. Um, I'm trying to summarize exactly how, how, what we talked about. It was about a lot, many, many different topics. Ultimately talking about Islamic culture, about how Islamic culture comes into the England, English, how it manifests, how we are, either as Christians or as atheists, going to tackle Islamic culture, how we're going to evangelize, in my case, to Muslims, and what our mission actually is here at the park. Our mission here is to evangelize to Muslims and to get them to understand that their religion is not the true religion and to get them to turn away from that. And I know very much my friend here is not a Christian. I hope one day he will be. But at the very least, we have the same objective. We both understand that Islam is not a good religion or a true religion. And it is better if people leave Islam. So, Thank you. God bless. Thank you, sir.